So just to go through uh, what I'm going to outline today, uh, this is we're going to go through a bit of game analysis, passing analysis, tactical analysis, strengths, weaknesses, and a bit of a game plan, and then I'll uh, summarise at the end. So game analysis. So looking through uh, performance analysis systems, um, uh, we need to uh, have a look at performance indicators. So uh, to analyse the passing um, of Liverpool, uh, I've had a look at positive and negative yardage. And on top of the performance indicators, you need to have some action variables. So the action variables are positive pass completion or non-completion, and negative pass completion and non-completion. So in the game analysis, we need some more operational definitions. So the behaviours, so uh, just to make it clearer, passes with one foot from top one teammate to the other. Positive pass is a forward motion of the ball from the initial starting point towards the attacking goal. And obviously a negative pass is backwards motion uh, away from the attacking goal. Outcomes, so a successful outcome is passed that goes directly to a teammate. Regardless, it doesn't matter if it's on the floor or in the air, uh, and the teammate has to be in control of the ball when he receives the pass. Unsuccessful uh, is uh, when a pass is intercepted, uh, the receiving player has to alter their running speed direction to receive the ball, or they're not in control of the pass. So let's have a look at the first one. This is Robertson uh, against Salzburg. You can see negative yardage and pass it. Positive yardage, passing to um, Mane, receives the ball, he's in total control of the ball. So that would be a successful positive pass. So as you can see on the line, there's the yardage line, positive and negative. So uh, this is uh, Jordan Henderson. Uh, he's going to pass back to uh, Virgil van Dijk. That is a negative pass. And a unsuccessful pass. So... Uh, this is a pass down to Salah on the wing, as you can see again, positive and negative pass. Uh, it goes down to Salah, he's trying to control the ball, but it's a poor first touch, he's not in control of the ball, so that's an unsuccessful pass. Still going through some of the um, previous games, uh, I went through six previous games. First one was Napoli against Liverpool, and all these games are analysed in, in regards to the positive and negative uh, passing data. So I coded uh, six games. First one, Napoli Liverpool. Um, as you can see by set up Liverpool playing four three three, they'll always play a four three three. Um, some of the stats from the games on the left hand side: possession rate. So uh, Napoli had forty eight percent, Liverpool fifty two, and positive and negative yardage. Um, so I've split it down into total first and second half. Where I'll go through the uh, percentages later on. Next game was Liverpool Salzburg. Liverpool won four three. You can see some of the stats. Uh, they had the majority of the possession and, and uh, some of the total first and second half percentage and um, positive stats. Next game is Man United Liverpool. Uh, previous two games were in the Champions League. This game was in the uh, English Premier League. Yeah, again, 4 3 3. This was 1 all. Uh, possession rate 68% to Liverpool. Um, 245 positive passes out of uh, 450. And first half, second half stats. Next game, back into the UEFA Champions League. Liverpool won, Napoli won. This is on the 27th of November. Uh, yeah, again, 4-3-3. Seen some stats on the side. Uh, Salzburg, Liverpool. Uh, UEFA Champions League. 4-3-3, yeah, again, they won 2-0 away from home. Um, some uh, stats on the side. So total, total successful passes, 408. Out of 57% uh, of those were positive and 42% uh, were negative on 173. And the final game, our last game against uh, Liverpool, when we won 1-0, uh, we set up as a 4-4-2. And you can see the stats on the side, even though 27% possession, um, we managed to come away with a win. So let's just have a look at the passing analysis. Uh, I just want to uh, outline the uh, coding. <coughs> And uh, of all the games and the scores, so I coded all the games uh, with a total amount of successful passes and split them into positive passes and negative passes uh, with regards to yardage. You can see on the side all the data. Um, so let's just go through, have a quick look. So the lowest total of the passes um, was actually in the Napoli-Liverpool game, 17th of September. Uh, Napoli won 2-0 and the successful passes was only 405. 
Next one is the lowest first half. So uh, we're talking about positive passes. And all these stats are for Liverpool. So um, we want to look at the lowest positive passes, uh, which was in the same game again, Napoli-Liverpool. There was only 103 in the first half positive passes. So that was sort of 52% of the total passes in the first half were in a positive direction. <coughs> And uh, let's have a look at lowest second half percentages. So this one is on negative passing. So we want that to be a high percentage uh, when we're looking through these stats. So the highest uh, one is the same as the Napoli-Liverpool game. And that was 47.9%. And last but not least, uh, the uh, number on the far end is the difference. So is the difference between positive and negative passes. Um, the uh, closer it is... Uh, to zero, it means that uh, their their yardage gain is not uh, in that much of a positive uh, number. So you can see that some of the other stats, like the uh, our game, they actually the difference was ninety. So uh, between the uh, positive and negative passes. So I just want to go through this little clip of positive and negative passes in action. Um, couple of positive passes in this general clip they tend to do many negative passes so the negative pass because the two banks of four was uh, the defensive bank of four and the midfield four um, they quite and keep we try and keep a tight line uh, condense a space between that so there's no breaking a line so Liverpool are forced to um, have positive and negative passes here you can see that they're forcing the play because there's not much space in between the uh, midfield and our defense to play the pass so as we do in, uh, to limit the passes, we shift across the field and limit the space between. So you can see now that there's tight, so they'll try and force a, a very difficult pass. So then once I've uh, coded all the stats, a little bit of the boring stuff, but we're going through a take the mean and the standard deviation, lower quartile and upper quartile, and then we run that through um, uh, uh, what's called a, a, an over. So then let's get on to tactical analysis. Now we've done the passing analysis. So let's look at in possession. So Liverpool set up, they'll, uh, Van Dijk and Gomez, they'll drop, or whoever two centre backs are, they'll drop um, and split the centre backs when, they, when they've got the ball, especially playing out from the back. Fabinho will drop as a centre defensive midfielder, and then when Yaldum or Henderson will join the forward line. So a little clip of them in possession, it's Jordan Henderson, uh, as we can see. Um, the revert to a back two and uh, what they're trying to do is switch play to shift the opposition across so play out to Robertson is the high full back uh, there's a triangle of play here an overload of three versus two and you can see the Fabinho drop in inside and Henderson this because they want to create a, a space on the wing second again in possession so playing out from the back back two support and play out back and obviously the full backs uh, move forward into a wide position they play out to uh, Robertson on this side and that's reverting into a uh, near side fullback makes up a back three and the opposite fullback will push it on to create some space and then Fabinho drops to support the player uh, support the play and offer a route through midfield to the forwards gets a bit lucky on this one still retains possession and you can see how then they quickly build out so Fabinho will hold, or when the Alden will hold, but Fabinho does on this one. Um, where Alden and uh, Robertson can then attack. And in the final third, they'll quit one or two pass and move. Uh, very lethal in the final third. You can see that on the edge of the box, you can see that uh, when Alden and Robertson will, will move forward onto the edge of the box to support play. So that's in possession, out of possession. So when they're um, out of possession, they'll try and regain a possession from the front three. Um, they'll drop into a midfield four, uh, one of the fullbacks will slot in, and as uh, I say, the four with three. So on this day, out of possession, this is against Napoli, UEFA Champions League, one of the games. So the front three will try and uh, do a low press. Napoli try and shift the ball across, It'll be a midfield four, and there's the back three, back four in this instance. That's out of possession. In transition, so defence to attack, um, full backs to drive forward to create width, they'll stay with a back two, and centre mid will hold to provide a switch opportunity, and attack to defence, they will close down and regain possession as quickly as they can. The centre mid will try and apply pressure to delay the attack, 
and the near side fullback returns to a back three. So this again still in our last game. We see that Robertson bombs on and Trent Alexander Arnold will provide the width. Great, and there's still two blocks of four for us. There's Fabino trying to regain position. So that's transition from defence to attack. So the next part is looking at uh, key set pieces, so corners. This is a map of the uh, where the plays, where they try and hit, what pos uh, positions on the field they'll try and hit. So on the left side there was um, so there's 15 uh, corners from the left hand side. So 66%, which is you know, more than half, is they drop into the edge of the six yard box um, and look for a flick on. Occasionally they will go short and uh, a couple of attempts, so three, uh, uh, so 20% they'll go to the far post. On the right hand side, 50% uh, they'll go short yet again on the edge of the six yard box. A couple of time, uh, one time they'll go near post, a couple of times they'll try and um, hit the keeper. Um, and then a couple of times to uh, around the penalty area and then twice so 14% out of the total right sided uh, corners they'll go to the far post free kicks so out of the 16 free kicks this is the map of the uh, use of the splitting up into defensive half and attacking half so in the defensive half, they'll, they'll predominantly, majority of the time, they'll shift the play across from where the free kick is. They tend to go to the left-hand side, try and shift the opposition across, create space for an overlap on the far opposition, so they're enticing the forwards in the midfields to come in, try and regain possession. Then they'll switch out. In the attacking half, um, they will look for Van Dijk uh, around the six-yard box, tend to go back post, Virgil van Dijk won't really see him at the front post and halfway into the uh, attacking half they will tend to take a quick free kick because they are quite devastating on transitioning into attack so if they uh, are, gain a free kick due to a uh, tactical foul then they will take a free quick free kick so strengths, weaknesses and game plan Strengths, so the greater playing between the back three enticing the opposition to advance to regain possession. Uh, they always look for the fullbacks to drive past a wide midfielder to create a 2v1 uh, on opposition fullbacks. And they're excellent at creating space in the wide attacking areas to make use of your, you know, use all the space available, especially to stretch the opposition. Weaknesses, so the attacking threat can be nullified if, we have, if there's two lower level compact blocks. We have a couple of um, you know, energetic forwards to reduce the positive passing, which we were talking about uh, in our passing analysis. So in our last game, this is them regaining possession. You can see that there's going to be two blocks of four, two banks of four, and the forwards try and low press, intercept any way we're passing. That's the back four, staying in a, uh, in a defensive line, and the midfield four. So yeah, again, you can see the negative passing. I'm trying to switch play. Full backs go wide. Two blocks of floor for us. Try and force the play. They regain possession. Switch to the opponent's half. So we shift across the field, limit the space between midfields and defenders. And then they try and force the uh, most difficult ball. Second weakness, so a, a, a play a high line on free kicks. Uh, so they can, uh, it offers the routes for us around the defence, uh, especially when the uh, defence is uh, a bit more compact. So you can see in our last game, enticing the forwards through, ball over the back. On this particular occasion, the ball wasn't successful. And thirdly, uh, high line at set pieces. So uh, that was a free kick in our defensive half. In there, def in there uh, just over the halfway line. 
so set pieces um, over we can use overlapping fullbacks or set and return forwards and they can exploit the uh, space and also the incorrect body shape uh, motion of the defenders coming out so part of the game plan in possession quick passing try and get through their midfield out of possession two blocks of four and two forwards low level press try and limit the space between midfield and defence corners edge of the six yard box on both occasions we have to keep an eye out for them going short to entice the defence out and then put a ball around the back in transition from them from defence to attack we need to force them inside they will try and create width and overlaps on the 2v1 for the full backs so force them inside where the uh, we have uh, more players and we can disrupt the play Free kicks, look for Virgil van Dijk for them, uh, attacking free kicks, especially uh, on the edge of the box. So to summarise, negative passes for Liverpool, if we force the negative passes, there will be a positive outcome for us as all the data shows.